We're going to talk about <clears throat> Algebra 2, page 1122, which is the second piece in the series. And if you're a student watching this, I want to encourage you to have your um, parent or your supervisor tune in for just a minute. Because I, I want to point out a couple of things there, just a little introduction before we actually get into the pages. <clears throat> the content in this pace, for someone who has done algebra before, like maybe a parent or a teacher, and they look at this and say, wow, I never had to do that when I was in Algebra 2. And that's kind of my first reaction, looking at some of these things, um, infinite geometric series and geometric sequences and um, arithmetic series. And it's, it'd be hard to explain um, the real life applications for why you would use this. The main reason that we, um, I think, one of the main reasons that they're having you work through these problems is because they keep giving you these formulas and then data that you can plug in <clears throat> and then solve the formula and uh, get answers. And you can even solve for different variables within that um, same equation. So that application of you know, solving using formulas, that is very much a real life, you know, application. And, um, and manipulating and having to use the algebra, you know, techniques that you've learned from Algebra 1 to, you know, remember the, you know, parentheses first <clears throat> and then exponents. And then uh, you do multiplication and division before you do addition and subtraction. So all of those things are definitely being used in order to solve the problems in this piece. So um, bear with it, okay? Some of it may seem a little hard. Um, a lot of this is introduction to a college course called um, <clears throat> Statistics. And, and actually, that is something that um, is probably more useful for a student in going to college to take a course like that than calculus and some of the other college courses. So statistics is a very good um, math course. So this will kind of prepare you for some of the college math that you may have to do, even if you're not a real mathy student, so to speak, okay? But I will <clears throat> just mention to, um, to the teachers and parents who might be tuning in that on just about every page at the beginning, there is a formula. They put it in a gray box, and then in all caps and exclamation point, they say, memorize this formula. <clears throat> and I'm not sure why they think it's so important to memorize a formula. As I read through this pace, I realized, wow, there are a bunch of formulas, and they're all using very similar variables, and it gets kind of complicated to know which is which, and when do I use which one, and to memorize it and try to use it, I think would be really, really hard. And I don't think it's necessary, okay? So, I mean, I've been teaching 35 years. I'm telling you, <clears throat> reference, you know, there's reference material always available. And the main objective here is to know which one to use from a list. Look at the list, choose the correct one to use, plug in the data, okay? So I would encourage you to um, have your student make a, uh, a reference sheet, write those formulas out, excuse me, <coughs> wow, write the formulas out, write down you know, a little code explaining what the variables mean, and one more point, these formulas are really hard to read when they are in a gray box, a dark gray box with black type inside. <laughs> And, um, you know, a lot of students who struggle, and especially if they struggle with math or they just have, you know, vision issues, um, it's just adding a layer of difficulty and complexity by having them try to read it in a, in a setting like that. And number two, trying to memorize it. So let's simplify life a little bit. Use color, okay? Make the formulas larger and easy to read and label what the variables are for and then reference it as you're working through the pace, even as you're doing the checkup, the self-test, the pace test. I Personally, I would, that's what I would do if I had students working through this pace. <clears throat> I would definitely encourage them to write out and use that reference sheet on all of their testing for this, okay? 
And uh, if they really enjoy it, when they get to college, you know, they can memorize it and continue to use it through life. But they're really only going to have to use it for, you know, a pace or two. So it's, it's not a life skill that needs to be mastered I and mean, memorized and held on to. So I'm going to end with that little intro and we'll move into a lesson about um, some of the problems on page 8 in just a minute.